Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Welcome back, and thank you all for your patience on today's video. At long last, the time has come for my advanced guide to the Red Mage in Crystalline Conflict. In today's video, I shall cover their abilities, strategies I use, strengths and weaknesses, as well as class matchups. Obviously, it is impossible to tell you how to win. I only hope this video will help you to understand the Red Mage better, allowing you to improve and climb through those ranks in the brand new season. Thank you all for your continued support. We are rapidly closing in on 1900 subscribers. Thanks for watching, and I shall see you all in the next one. A must for any good red mage is to understand both the white shift and the black shift. The white shift grants access to silence, mitigation, healing increases, and shielding, while the black shift grants bind, damage over time, and other detrimental effects to your enemies, increasing their damage taken and lowering their healing output. I myself play rather aggressive, spending around 70 to 80% of a match in black shift, swapping to white shift for the crowd control ability silence, before shifting to black for my damage phase. White Shift I like to use defensively for escapes, or to apply healing benefits for the team when we are an ally down, helping to even out a fight. For your main magic combos, you have the Stone into the Arrow, and the Fire into the Thunder. Which combo you get depends on the shift you are in, and are purely cosmetic. All four spells deal the same 5000 damage. Where things change is with your melee rotation, repost into Zvertu, ending with redoublement. Under the white shift, the melee rotation applies shielding, great in 1v1s against high burst damage jobs. Under the black shift, you trade off the shielding for an additional strong damage over time. Landing all three really chunks away at a player's health. Upon completing the three-part melee combo, you gain access to either the holy or the flare. Under white shift, the holy deals AoE damage alongside throwing a quick heal your way. Under the black shift, your the flare will do a much more potent AoE blast. For your crowd control, you have Resolution. This ability will strike all within a straight line towards your main target. Under the white shift, you gain Silence, one of the most powerful crowd controls there is, and is the main reason you'll be shift swapping throughout a match. While black shift applies Bind, great for fleeing targets, or to help snag multiple targets for, let's say, a Dragoon ult. Next is your buffs and debuffs. We have the Magic Barrier for the white shift, and Frazzle for the black shift. Barrier will reduce damage taken by 10% and increase healing via actions also by 10% for yourself and all allies within range. This really helps to even out the playing field when you remember down and even in situations where you must stall, unable to leave the objective. On the other hand, Frazzle is one of your most dangerous abilities, a 15 yard radius AoE, increasing your enemy's damage taken while lowering their healing via actions by 10%. Combined with the Black Shift melee rotation makes the Red Mage one of the best tank killers around. For movement, you have Corpse to Corpse to close the gap onto a target. That same target takes 10% more damage and will also deal 10% less damage to yourself. And your jump back displacement not only puts space between you and your enemy, but will increase the damage and healing from your next spell by a huge 20%. My personal favorite combo is to open with the white shift resolution for silence. Switch back to black shift, corpse a corpse onto your target into a frazzle. Engage with the free part melee rotation Dive back with Displacement, ending in the Flare. This combo is so potent, any role regardless of the job will struggle. Running this on repeat, through all of my games not only did I get a 100% win streak, every time I opened with this combo, the targeted player practically exploded, gaining a instant advantage, resulting in many fast rounds lasting barely 2-3 to three minutes. Right as the round begins, I waste no time in rushing to mid. I need to be ready in position to adjust for what my enemies are doing. Spotting a lone samurai in the speed lane, I throw myself through as bait while rushing back to my team. They instantly took this bait, throwing themselves into my entire team and exploding within seconds, giving my team the advantage in the opening battle. Right after, I waste no time throwing damage into their Dragoon. If he dies here and there, their free range DPS would quickly follow. Not going for the greed kill, I retreat to Elixir before going back in. A red mage with no resources will not last very long against multiple targets. Just before the crystal reaches the objective, 
I position off to the side, ready to hit their entire group with a big frazzle. I chose to go in as late as possible, in order to give my team respawning extra time. And as we slowly pick off the enemy team, our stagger quickly turned into their stagger. At this moment, they begin to regroup. I throw as much damage as possible into their Dragoon before needing to retreat. Fortunately, I had enough tick damage going, forcing the Dragoon to flee. Once I healed back up, I jump in and very quickly spot a small group forming. Too good a chance not to limit break into. Within seconds, four enemies drop, leaving only the Dragoon alive. I am in no rush to finish him. The longer he lives, the worse their stagger becomes. Only once he was under 50% do I hit silence, ensuring the easy kill. Now this is where the enemy team begin getting frustrated and start panicking. The first to respawn throw themselves into battle. A lone bard is of no threat, quickly staggering himself once again. I spend this time playing to the back of my group, while being in range, ready to dive in at a moment's notice. With good team coordination, we shut down their samurai moments before achieving limit break, and the longer this fight went on, the more mistakes the enemy team made. Continuing to keep track of enemies, and positioning myself away from unwanted damage, I am free to use silence and damage away with little to no contest. I am also being aware of my surroundings. Should I need to retreat, I need a clear idea of where I am going. However, the enemy's team refusal to give us some extra objective time in order to stop their own stagger and regroup meant this match was ours from the very moment we flipped control. For the hardest match of the evening, I begin with my same opening strategy, targeting the weakest role on the enemy team, the summoner. I land my silence. Seeing my team dive my target right after being silenced meant I need to continue my follow-up with Frazzle, and almost instantaneously the summoner falls, with their warrior moments behind. Not long after, their black mage begins throwing out free spam. I now know that I need to punish him any chance I get. The black mage's ability to spam out crowd control and high damage can easily win them the game. Knowing now the summoner is essentially a free kill, and the warrior being far too eager to take on multiple targets at once, means I only need to be worried about the Dragoon, Samurai and Black Mage. And if I can focus the Black Mage at any chance I get, I can leave their melee down to the mirror match with my own melee. At this point, I overcommit and fall back for a much better position. My team takes some hard hits and thanks to this, the enemy begin piling up on the objective. This fight was still far from over and I am freely able to stick close, dealing damage uncontested. They then begin trickling in one by one and the very moment I see their Black Mage already weak, I waste no time in nuking him down with my own limit break. We made a good first push, however they were slowly regrouping and the environmental makes it a much harder situation. I stall out for as long as I can and quickly turn to flee right as their warrior returns. Caught without my guard, I make the risky decision to flee through the environmental taking a large hit in the process. I barely make it out alive, however this gave me the chance to elixir back up and get back to the battle. They put up a good fight, however I stick around as not only do they burn through their Samurai's Limit Break, but also their Dragoons. Using the map and line of sights to my advantage, I am able to get a cheeky kill on the Dragoon. Following up, I am able to keep damage going from the side. Going to point now would just be a free kill for my enemies. I am aiming to be ready for my ally's return. Unfortunately, my first death comes at the hands of the Samurai, who dove me from his group the very moment I hit my Limit Break.
Upon my respawn, I want to engage without going in deep, as we are two players down. However, with four enemies so tightly packed together, this was a chance that could not be missed, landing a big silence and frazzle. This was enough bonus damage to both pressure and snag a kill, giving enough time to delay, while the other two respawn and get back. This whole time, I keep a range gap, eyeballing their Samurai's limit break. The clear moment I know I am free to dive back in, I rush their Dragoon. With 54 seconds on the clock, this turnaround happens perfectly, as we have 2% more objective than the enemy. Jumping ahead following another back and forth, the match just got interesting. Over time with both teams at 50%. Coming back to an already weakened enemy team, I drop my limit break. My focus here is still to control their black mage. I do not dive or give chase, as doing so would result in myself being crowd controlled, potentially losing us the match. Instead I continue to hold the objective and apply pressure while we regroup. After backing out to Elixir to fall, the black mage makes the mistake of being caught out in the open, allowing me to apply frazzle and strike him down with a well-timed ver flare while instantaneously finishing off their warrior. This got a nice staggered push going, slowly inching closer and closer to that win. Skipping ahead again, I will let you watch how these final moments unfold. See for yourself how I go about in the final moments for victory. Southern Cross, one truly powerful limit break. Under Black Shift, the base 8000 damage is increased by 50%, while under White Shift, the base 8000 cure is also boosted by 50%. The players at the center of this limit break receive the effects twice, meaning you can reach a 24,000 heal or damage. I have come to learn this limit break makes you a tank's best friend. We all know the infamous Dark Knight Dragoon combo, and should you have a Dark Knight on your team, this limit break works even better. The Dark Knight pulls them in, allowing you to target your own Dark Knight with the Limit Break, not only dealing huge damage, but also through some healing the tank's way. And being an instant cast, it is much easier to time this combo. This Limit Break is really great at finishing back row targets unaware of the damage potential. You can even throw it out there to prevent a target escape. I do so all the time. And to help elevate the combo of targeting allies, using my macro on screen will allow you to instantly Limit Break that ally with one press of a button. While this won't be needed in every match, there have been those few games where it truly makes a difference. This ability to target the allies for limit break will allow you to land the ult at angles which the summoner and the black mage would not. You no doubt may have heard players say, don't play red mage. Black mage and summoner is better. I wouldn't say so. Yes, red mage is harder to master, but you have advantages over the other casters. Having access to a double dash and midi rotation, you can follow up on heavy team damage better to quickly finish a target without the need of cast times. Yes, Summoner and Black Mage also have instant casts. However, Summoners lose damage on players above 50% health, and a Black Mage could of course teleport to burst their target. However, they won't have the same escape potential as the Red Mage. Otherwise, they must first wait for their limit break to truly pop off with instant casts. The Red Mage also does a better job of burning through a tank's self-sustain. Powerful melee with an additional strong burst of damage ending in a powerful magic attack can drop unprepared tanks within seconds. 
The Red Mage also has Frazzle, lowering enemy healing done and making them take more damage. A highly underrated skill. This one ability has been the sole reason. I won many team battles even when one to two players down. Having two battle styles, both range and close range, alongside two battle shifts affecting how certain actions work, allow you to have more ways to approach battles and to get more creative than the Summoner and the Black Mage counterparts who have a much more linear playstyle. As a Red Mage, you can adapt to many more scenarios. And of course, let's not forget the Morty Silence, one of the most powerful crowd controls around. Simply casting this upon an already weakened target almost always guarantees a free kill. As I said previously, you can also limit break allies, backing up your tank, protecting that backline white mage, while simultaneously granting a potential life-saving heal. If you are a player who can think actively, think and plan during the mayhem, the red mage will allow you to dominate. Just like any job, you are not without weakness. You not only need to understand your abilities, but the abilities of the other roles, and a good knowledge of the different maps, in order to use the red mage to its full power. Whereas summoners and black mage can oftentimes achieve more, with a less understanding of the other roles. Both can sit back all game dropping damage, and the black mage can sit back using only their ice rotation, applying three different levels of crowd control on repeat, with a fast limit gauge charge time to top it all off. The red mage can also get confusing, having both range and close range, or also managing your white shift and your black shift, do not really make this job beginner friendly, and choosing the wrong time to switch into the melee rotation can very quickly become a fast death. Having so many different ways to approach situations leaves you with a much higher learning curve than the other casters, and can be all too easy to get frustrated with the role. For matchups, let's begin with the tanks. Paladin, Gunbreaker, Dark Knight, and Warrior. Surprisingly, you will fare up well against each of these roles. The Black Shift midi rotation really hits hard and eats through self sustain. Lowering a tank's healing output or increasing their damage taken can really make tanking a nightmare to pull off. Thanks to your movement, you can easily stay out of their reach and dive away from their crowd control. And with such a powerful instant cast to limit break, you can finish them off in a heartbeat. Obviously, you never want to tunnel vision against tanks but you'll be happy knowing at any moment you can shift all your attention to them to become the bane of their existence. When it comes to melee, things get rather interesting. Any one mistake can rapidly turn bad for you. However, at the same time, you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with each of the five melee rolls. Instantly closing the gap on a Dragoon greatly reduces the burst damage of their Wormwind Thrust, after which you can instantly create space. The Monk can generate shields with Dash. However, with a simple switch to your White Shift, your melee rotation can do the same, and can come down to a battle of stubbornness. A ninja can be just as annoying as yourself. They are looking for the moment you drop below 50% HP, but with self-sustain and movement, you are able to keep the ninja at bay. The average reaper won't pose much of a threat, but those rare experienced reapers can build up to a burst combo so powerful, there will be nothing you can do. And these samurai, while they hit hard, their rotation is rather slow. Most scenarios you will have little to no effort shutting them down, and tracking their limit break allows you to ruin their entire game. You only want to engage against melee with a good amount of MP and cooldowns at the ready. Burning through resources quickly drops all advantages you might have against them. Physical range DPS can pose quite the threat, and you fight against them on equal terms. Bards can always employ their silence ability against you, and if unchecked, at range can inflict some serious damage. Should you get up close, however, so long as you can play through their bind and their evade, bards will pose little to no threat. The Machinist, on the other hand, is one of your main rivals. Sporting combos so potent, you will drop instantly. Respecting a Machinist is a must. Wait out their most powerful abilities before diving in close. Meanwhile, the Dancer exists to annoy you. Having four dashes makes it almost impossible to fully complete a melee rotation. You need to allow Dancers to exist and aim to catch them off guard. During Limit Break and a few AoE abilities, Dancers are unable to flee, granting you brief moments in which you can land some serious damage against other casters, including another Red Mage. Experience and patience will be the deciding factor. The Red Mage who uses silence better, alongside their buffs and debuffs, will usually dominate the enemy Red Mage. The Black Mage is your nemesis of the casters. Their vast amounts of crowd control will force out your Purify. At range, their damage heavily outweighs your own. You are looking to punish any mistakes they make, especially in positioning. Left to their own devices, Black Mages will carry their team to victory. And lastly is the Summoner, Overall, a very little threat to a red mage, and is often the ideal target to burn down during 5v5s, turning them into a 5v4. 
So long as you don't overcommit and burn through MP, the Red Mage will have little effort when dealing with a summoner. When it comes to the supports, your main focus of concern is the White Mage. So long as you keep track of when their imp has been used, you then only have their stun effect of their limit break to worry about. Their damage alone is not much to fear, however their healing can allow them to outsustain you, never overcommit and flee when you must. The Sage's ability to drop down immortality can open up the opportunity to jump in with your melee rotation for some nice burn damage. You can match their movement, just make sure not to burn through all of your cooldowns, leaving you exposed to the rest of his team. The Scholar is a must respect. Like Frazzle, Scholars can reduce healing done, but to a much stronger degree. With many other similar abilities, they are your lower single target damage counterpart and can easily make Red Mages struggle against the overwhelming amount of buffs and debuffs. At the same time, having a Scholar as an ally, you and your team can go crazy. And last up, we have the Astro. Outside of the limit break we all fear, Astrologians won't deal crazy amounts of damage to you. Their crowd control can be annoying, but it's still rather easy to play around.